Hi, I'm Varun Haran. I'm Managing Director for Asia and Middle East with ISMG. I have the pleasure of speaking with Dave Meltzer, who's the CTO for Tripwire, and Lamar Bailey, who's the Senior Director of Security for Tripwire. And we're going to be talking about the evolution of DevSecOps. Hi, guys. Thanks for joining us today. Good to be Thanks here. for having us. My pleasure. Uh, so to both of you, you know, as DevSecOps really takes off in the enterprise, we've been hearing about it for a while, and now it's really started getting ingrained in the enterprise culture. How do you see security organizations adopting to a faster pace of development? What's changing on the side of the security function? So the biggest thing that they have to invest in is automation. They just uh -huh. can't keep up with the speed with manual processes all along the way. So you have to look to what developers are using, what tools they're using, and how to embed security into that automation. Yeah, and the application development uh, life cycle is moving at a faster pace than it ever has before. Sure. The result of that is security, who might be used to, we're going to look for vulnerabilities once a week on our production systems, really have to get much earlier into that life cycle and find and fix the issues in partnership with the application development teams before they ever make their way into production. Right. So we were talking about DevSecOps. So we had DevOps come in in the beginning with automation happening with the, between those two, and then you're adding security to the mix. So there's always and some kind of friction, right? How do security teams who are so used to thinking in a very methodical, traditional fashion, how do they adopt to that? What are some recommendations that you can share? Well, I think if we start with the premise that we're going to start pushing change out into production systems maybe once an hour, uh, now we have to think about how do we do all of our security tests and assessments that in a time frame of, let's say, five minutes. Um, and it really requires some rethinking about how would we assess the security of a system when you think, well, I have five minutes to do it, I don't have a week to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And as Lamar said, automation is absolutely key to that, but not just automation in general, but being, a, being able to specifically hook into the CICD pipeline of DevOps teams and do the assessment in line of the production rollouts. Yeah, and you have a change in where these security teams are getting their products and getting their ideas. Traditionally, they'd look at, oh, I need vulnerability assessment, I need this, I talk to vendors. Now they need to go back and start talking to their developers, like, what are you using? What plugs into this? What can we do to make sure this code is secure before you move to the next stage? And using those as the input for, hey, what products and what processes do we need in place? Right. So is this necessarily owned by the security function, or is this an idea of what we talk about with DevSecOps, that security is owned by everybody and we're shifting left, so the developer really needs to start getting equipped with tools that help them do these things? Yeah, I think the theory of everyone owns everything is great until it comes to, well, who actually has the budget right. to actually go do stuff. Right. Uh, and we've seen that it's a mix. Very often, it's the IT organization, the security team that is bringing the compliance or the security requirements into the application developers. Uh, often, DevOps teams start and aren't thinking about all the different controls that large enterprises need to have in place. So we have found it is really important for those IT security teams to go to that application developer, go to the DevOps teams, and really work in partnership with them. Uh, right. But often the budgets are still coming from security for these right. tools. Right, and I think it's in the end, as the head of the security, uh, you know, who's responsible if something goes wrong, if a breach happens, that's the head that rolls, right? Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, like what Dave said, is coming back to those teams. So what works pretty well is always making like a tiger team of all right. Here's the IT security side. Here's the uh, DevOps security, and here is the developers that are doing the security, and letting those kind of be the champions for the rest of the company about, hey, here's how we need to do, and here's who needs to do what. Okay, so let's pan back a little bit. Let's talk about enterprises who are just getting into DevSecOps right now, right? What is the approach that they should take? Well, I think, as Lamar said, the first thing that you want to do is make sure you're having the conversations between the teams. Right. So as an IT security war, uh, engineer, you're probably focused on what's moving to the cloud. What are the new services that these application developers are adopting? What are their new tools? Um, so just educating yourself on what is Docker? What does Kubernetes mean? Sure. What are the sure. Jenkins tools being used for? to go build systems, how do things get, make their way from GitHub to a production service running in AWS. Right. The first thing is really just to understand what does that pipeline look like. And then you can start to layer in, well, we have security controls that have been targeted at our traditional systems. How do we apply security into each stage of that life cycle? But it might be a different way that we need to apply it versus the old way of doing things. Right, and you know, what about incentivizing the, the developers? Because I think security from the beginning has been considered a kind of a bottleneck or a checkpoint in the development process, right? So you need a change in the mindset of the developer community as well if you want to cooperate, if they want 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, it's, collaboration it's also a change in the mindset of, of security, IT security and all. It's like, yeah. if you are slow, then the developers going to figure out a way to get around it. Right. So they have to get up to the speed of DevOps. Right. And that's the biggest thing. If you make it easier for the developer to write secure code, write secure applications, and push them out, they'll do it. Okay. And I think that, that speed point that Lamar brought up is really important sure. because that's the priority of the application developers. They're trying to get more and more velocity. They're trying right. to push out new features faster than they ever right. have before. Right. Right. So if security can go in with that mindset of we're partnering with the application developers to let them move faster because if you don't implement these security controls as part of that pipeline, we're going to have to go put them on in production after the fact, and that means that we're going to have to hold your production pushes for hours, days, weeks, right. and developers don't want that either. Yeah. So I think if you can pitch it as this is a win for the organization, it's a win for the application development team, right. then you can start building that partnership. I think one of the issues with DevSecOps has also been that security is always kind of uh, not considered at par with maybe say a business logic flaw, right? It's not considered a legitimate bug. It's just something that needs to happen right at the end of the process. Is that changing in the market? Do you see that? Yeah, I would say it's changing. I see a lot of the, especially in DevOps, looking at, all right, what are we starting with? Is this secure? And then as we build onto it, right. it's building in small pieces. And it's like, all right, we can revert back quickly if something's not right. So all of those, like you said, the business logic and all, all that's kind of getting to the same level of importance because it's easy to fix and easy to roll back. Okay. So what are the problems of scale with large enterprises when they're looking at integrating DevSecOps into their uh, development process? Yeah, that's a great question. And at Tripwire, actually, we have the same problem. We have numerous application developers, mm -hmm. many different teams around the world, sure. all trying to work together to build secure products at a high velocity. And for us, some of the challenges you have is if you have one team that's working on DevOps and they have one set of tools, um, then you might have a, well, we can use native tools. We have capabilities built into that technology. We can do a manual assessment of what's going on. When you then translate that to a large enterprise where it's many different teams, they have different tool chains, different technologies, organizations probably grown through some mergers and acquisitions. Sure, sure. Now we have to find how do we layer security in a way that's compatible with the different organizations that I have to secure, it's compatible with the different tool chains and technologies, and that means that you have to start to bring together things that can work with this heterogeneous environments. And sometimes just that one tool for that one tool chain isn't really appropriate when you're talking about enterprise scale. All right. Anything yeah. you'd like to add, Lamar? No, I think you pretty much nailed it there, Dave. It is the different environments and making sure you can secure all of those. Got it. Um, developers get very um, religious about, I want to use this tool in this thing. And sometimes you have to say, hey, you can't use that because it doesn't fit into our environment. Right, so right. some amount of standardization is required across the board, right? Yep. Okay, so you know, DevSecOps is really hot right now, right? And it's a very crowded marketplace. So how is Tripwire differentiating itself in 2019? What are you guys doing differently? Well, we launched Tripwire for DevOps, which is really aimed at the idea of pushing security assessment left into the pre-production phase, hooking directly into the CI/CD pipeline of our customers so that you can assess and find these risks before they hit production. Sure. Marry that up with the production monitoring Tripwire has been doing for many years, and you now have a holistic DevOps solution that goes all the way from developers committing code to the pushes of change into the production environment. All right, great. So guys, thanks so much for joining me today, and thanks so much for that great insight. Yeah. Right. Thank you. So I was speaking with Dave Meltzer, who's the CTO of Tripwire, and Lamar Bailey, who's the Senior Director of Security at Tripwire. For ISMG, this is Varun Harun. Thanks for watching.